お前は違うようだな、ね、何者だただの通りすがりだ Star Wars Visions is an anthology series wherein each episode is crafted by a different animation studio. The duel being the first episode, which is handled by Kamikaze Duga. It's no secret that George Lucas took heavy inspiration from both director Akira Kurosawa as well as general samurai filmography when creating Star Wars. From the screen wipes lifted wholesale from The Hidden Fortress to the visual aesthetic of Jedi and Sith, borrowing heavily from the classic Ronin wandering the Japanese countryside in countless films, these influences are easy to spot. The duel is an acknowledgement and celebration of both Star Wars itself and what helped shape it. Before getting into anything else, special mention should go to the episode's eye popping visuals. While on a personal level, I generally prefer traditional 2D animation, I have to applaud how stunning this looks in 3D. But then again, it's not surprising considering these are the same folks that also crafted those stellar JoJo's Bizarre Adventure openings. It's clear that the use of film grain, along with the decision to go with a predominantly black and white color scheme, are the most overt references to traditional samurai cinema prominent throughout the 1950s. In a move more reminiscent of the graphic novel Sin City, however, the only other colors present are for anything that emits artificial light, most notably lightsabers, laser blasts, and droids. More than just creating a striking art style for the short, it also acts as a way of acknowledging the merger between the old and the new, the inspiration and what spawned from it, by calling attention to the most iconic elements of Star Wars. Through visuals alone, the duel celebrates its love of both samurai and Star Wars by presenting them together seamlessly in a beautifully Harmonious way. Given the brisk runtime of 15 minutes, the story of the short is very straightforward. A wanderer finds himself in a backwater village being threatened by bandits, in which he decides to intervene. The over the top antagonistic behavior of these ruffians is not simply a staple of samurai cinema, but has its roots in reality. In regards to Japanese history, these men were only ever of any use during a war. Thus, when the fighting ended, they were otherwise of little use to society and with no way to sustain themselves, often turned to pillaging. This explains their typically entitled nature. They feel betrayed for risking their lives for a people and country that no longer has a place for them. With this in mind, it's very telling that the bandits in the duel are, in fact, former stormtroopers. Assuming this takes place after the events of Return of the Jedi, wherein the Empire lost, then it stands to reason that these stormtroopers have found themselves in a situation that's not so dissimilar to the bandits of old. While the motivations are slightly different, it speaks to a similar vein of entitlement wherein these men feel that they should have ownership of the galaxy. Therefore, they've rationalized that this is their right to take advantage of those less fortunate. The parallels are absolutely palpable. The protagonist, known simply as the Wanderer, is a clear analog to the many Ronin seen in several samurai films. However, given George Lucas's specific affinity for Akira Kurosawa, it's possible that this is a more intentional nod towards the characters portrayed by Toshiro Mifune, most notably the protagonist of the film Yojimbo. It's hard to really appreciate. Uh, a true genius of Kurosawa, I think, and tell you've seen a few of the films, and then you've been able to see other films at the same time and be able to realize his visual style. My, my favorite of all time is really Seven Samurai. That being said, there are also undeniable similarities to the manga turned film series Lone Wolf and Cub. For starters, Ogami Ito, the main character of said series, has a son named Daigoro. Whom he travels with in a stroller. This is no mere stroller, however, as it contains secret compartments and gadgets that allow him to gain the upper hand in unique ways. 
This is not far off conceptually from the Wanderer's droid, whom he remote controlled in order to turn the tide of battle against the stormtroopers. Even the two standing together side by side has a similar silhouette. Looking past the company the two keep, both protagonists are also morally dubious and resort to cheap tricks that take advantage of their opponent's sense of honor. This is made even more evident when it is revealed that the Wanderer wields a red lightsaber, meaning he is not a Jedi but in fact a former Sith. Aside from Ogami Ito himself, many samurai films starred protagonists with complicated pasts and were not always clear-cut heroes, a notable example being the real-life person turned samurai legend Musashi Miyamoto, who infamously used the glare of the sun to defeat his nemesis Sasaki Kojiro. The Wanderer is a perfect embodiment of that moral grayness. The duel would have been enjoyable enough had it simply been a mishmash of homages and callbacks, but what truly elevates it and makes it memorable is its main antagonist. The bandit leader is a female Sith Lord, unlike anything seen before. Stylish and imposing, she strides into battle with a palpable aura of intimidation, strength, and brutality. The moment she enters the scene is when the episode truly shines. The reason why she works so well is because she is both perfectly in line with this being a loving tribute while also being wholly unique. Yes, bandit leaders are a typical archetype in samurai film, but they're almost never women. And while Sith Lords are also quite common in Star Wars, she is one that retains a sense of honor rather than simply giving in to pure rage. The bandit leader is the bow that ties everything together as she introduces a wonderful level of energy and charisma. Star Wars Visions The Duel is worth appreciating because it's a reverent and fun 15 minute short story with a beautiful visual aesthetic and a clear love for both Star Wars and samurai filmography. For anyone that is a fan of either, but especially of both, they would do well in setting aside the short amount of time it takes to watch this episode. This has been Daniel everyone and I hope to see you all again next time.